So hey guys, what's up? Surya here. Hope you all are great. So here we are Miss Grand India 2022 winner Prachi Nagpal to anna mata. So hey Prachi, hi. How are you? I am good. How are you? I am good. I am like all is well all the time. So I have to say you look really beautiful. Thank you. Ante me valla crown ke andam achin anna mata. Okay, so you can understand Telugu. Yes, I can understand a little bit of Telugu, but I can't speak in it unfortunately. Why so? I mean, although when I was growing up at school, I've always had Telugu friends, okay. but I never really found the need of learning Telugu in Hyderabad because I think that is the beauty of our city. That you know Hindi, you know English, you know Telugu, any of these languages you know, and you are sorted to live here. So I never really found the need of learning Telugu because everybody I knew either knew English or they knew Hindi. So it was like a win-win for me. But of course, having those Telugu group of friends and then my uh, helpers and workers at home also, you, you, when you hear them converse in Telugu, you start to understand it at least a little. And I think I made a mistake when I chose French over Telugu in school as oh third my language. Oh that was a very big because, mistake. I because I assumed I would be flying to France one day and I should learn French. But turns out that Telugu was the necessity and I should have learned it then. How is it like to be this uh, Miss Grand India 2022? I think it's a big responsibility because in this pageant, the national pageant that I was part of right now, which is known as Glamour and Supermodel India, I was just being prachi. But now when I will be heading to Miss Grand International, I am no longer Prachi. I am going to be called as India. So I have a responsibility to represent each and every one of the Indian people that we have in our country. Because over there, if, for example, if I make a mistake or if I don't come on time, then the impression goes that India did that. Oh, India is like this. So that kind of responsibility and that kind of uh, understanding is what I have come to with right now that this is not just about me anymore. This is about our beautiful homeland. This is about our motherland. And that is what I want to give back to my country. So Miss Grand International Pageant is going to be held in Indonesia. Yes. I guess in October. Yes. So I will be leaving on 1st of October. The yes. finale is on 25th of October. Okay. And the fact that it is the 10th anniversary of Miss Grand International, it is going to be the grandest show of the year. And I would request everybody, if possible, and with some time, because I know Diwali is also around that yes, same time. Exactly. But I think with the happiness, light and joy with Diwali coming in, I hope that I can also bring that same emotion to all of our fellow Indians with me being on stage, India being on stage that day. So we're going to have two festivals, yes. Diwali and you winning... Uh, Miss Grand International. Hopefully we can. And the competition actually starts with the Shera. So on 4th of October, we have registration, but the final competition begins on 5th of October, which is Dashera. So the win of good over evil is what we will be celebrating in India. And I will be going with all the good energy and vibes from here over there with me in Indonesia, because even Indonesia as a country is very culture and very yes. um, festival filled. Over there, they have a lot of Indianness to their culture as well. When I started reading about it, I found out that even Indonesians have a liking towards Ma Durga. And yes, yes, yes. so I was very happy that, oh my God, I'm lucky to be going to Indonesia at a time where all those 20 days that I am at the pageant, we have two major festivals that will be coming up. There are parts of Indonesia which have inherited our Hinduism and yes. our other, other relations. Yes. So it's really a beautiful country. I, f I feel like I'm going home in a way oh, because Indonesia okay. is known to have so many Indians there. So I'm hoping that even while I'm in Indonesia, I get a lot of support from the Indians over there. So there are like six major pageants in the world. Uh, Miss India, Miss Universe, yes. uh, Miss International, yes. something. So how is this different from the rest? So when it comes to the major big pageants of the world, we have Miss Universe, we have Miss World, we have Miss Earth, Miss International, now Miss Grand International and Miss Supranational. These are the six major big pageants of the world. And every pageant in the world stands for its own advocacy, stands for its own reasoning. So when it comes to Miss Grand International, the main motto of this pageant is to stop war and violence. 
and this does not necessarily mean just war when it comes to going on a battlefield but this can also mean how we all had covid recently the pandemic yes. so we were all going through a war with the pandemic as well sometimes wars are invisible we might not know something is happening but people are suffering across the globe so that is the kind of war that this pageant aims to stop because i fight a war on a daily basis with my diabetes so for me to go here and understand not just the war that is happening in the world where people are still fighting in two countries but also to be able to explain to people that there are many people like me who fight a war on a daily basis and there are so many wars when it comes to fighting our emotions in a world today where mental health is so important i'm sure each and every person who's also watching this right now is going through some sort of turmoil on an everyday basis and each and every kind of fight that you get up with is what i would say that miss grand international supports that stop the war i guess you're type 1 diabetic yes so i mean like bro uh, in order to be a model you have to be on a specific diet you can't eat everything yes. you need to maintain proper sugar levels and all the things maybe sometimes you need to even fast yes so how did you even manage that so after i was diagnosed i was immediately told by the doctors that okay you can't, they they gave me a long list of things that okay don't eat this don't eat this don't eat this i'm like what can i eat then because as a 15 year old girl and 2 months before my board exams i already have the stress of my boards during that time after hearing so many things don't do this don't eat that don't go to the gym don't do all that my point was if i can't do this then what can i do so it took me almost 6 to 7 years to actually find the right people to find the right community of my own type ones that helped me understand that i can do anything that i put my heart out at and my coach he is based in bangalore right now mr sahil om madan when i got in touch with him last year he changed my perspective of what type 1 diabetes could be and it is through him that i actually understood that i can work out i can eat the things that i feel like eating it's just about the right insulin dosage and the right workout after that that i can manage it and because i come from punjabi plus south indian family okay leaving parathas and dosas has been a disheartening thing for me okay. and the moment i am back from indonesia regardless of whether i win or not i hope i do win although my first go to food is going to be to be able to have a good home cooked masala dosa uh-huh. with lots of chutney in it that's one thing i am craving for right now you know you remember this seven up ad where yes. uh, the miss uh, someone in the beauty pageant they yes. said that kadupu ninda biryani tintanu chill seven up thani and then she is the winner honest <laughs> yes so you're going to say that if you get a chance i mean yes why not if anybody asks me that what is the one thing i would do right now or eat right now first thought that comes in my mind is a good plate of biryani mm-hmm. so if that is what i have to say in order to win the crown then hell yes why not okay so were you born and brought up in hyderabad yes i am actually born and brought up in hyderabad my family roots are although from delhi okay. but anybody who meets me disagrees to the fact that i am from my my family is from delhi because when i am at home my hindi comes out in the proper old city hyderabadi hindi ha ha ki aisa baat aa kai ko kar rahe nakko mia that is the kind of language <laughs> that is the language you will find me speaking at home i will not be speaking in the proper hindi that delights speak in okay and of course i also converse sometimes with koncham koncham telugu with my okay. helpers at home okay. so they have been a big influence on me and i think I'm so grateful that I was actually born in Hyderabad because the values that I have learned here as part of South India in general is that everybody here is so down to earth is so humble and understands that Mana gurinche yes <laughs> and understands that there are more things to life than the materialistic huh. things like the family values that I've seen here growing up Okay so I can see you have a very good fashion sense. So what was your educational background? So I have completed my undergraduate from NIFT where I did fashion communication and then I went to Mumbai 
where I worked as a stylist. So I've had the honor to actually work with Alia Bhatt, Kangana Ranaut, Ranveer Singh and Katrina Kaif as well. And post that, I decided to complete my master's. So then I started doing my MBA in luxury management, which I'm still doing. I have another year to go and I do intend on completing it. I do not want to leave it behind. Let's see. Yes. Okay. And after that, then hopefully, like my mother's done a PhD in education. If God is with me and if life is with me, then hopefully I should be doing a PhD as well in fashion. Because growing up, even I thought I'll become an NCC um, person and then I will join army as a doctor. And look at where life brought me now. I became a stylist and now I'm doing my MBA in luxury management. Mm -hmm. And now I've won a pageant. And in the future, I'm still not sure what exactly I want okay, to so do. Okay, so you're going to run for prime minister? Um, <laughs> my grandmother wanted to run for prime minister, but that didn't happen. Okay. So, I mean, of course, politics is something I would like to stay away from. Yes, even me. Because that is not my cup of tea at all. I have massive respect for all our politicians, all the people who serve our country. And this is my way of serving the country. So I'm very happy doing it this way. But that is something that is extremely tough. You have to be stronger than what they put out as. And I think that we should leave it to these people who actually have the mighty heart to be able to do this. So everyone has their own dreams and interests. So was it always your dream to be Miss India or Miss Universe or someone influenced you? Uh, so in 2009, when I was just 11 years old, I saw my first ever Miss India. And during that year, the girl who won, she had a bob cut and nine tattoos on her body. So really? Yes. Her name was Ekta Chaudhary. Okay. And she was our representative to India the same year at Miss Universe. Okay. So when I saw that girl that night in a bob cut and her tattoos completely visible and she was so unabashed about it that I looked at her and thought, she doesn't look like a typical Miss India. But I really liked that about her, that she didn't look like a typical Miss India. I mean, what is a typical Miss India look? We still don't know because everybody, every year who wins is so different from the other. There is so much diversity in the girls that we have in our country that she inspired me. That if she can do this, then I can do this. If that happened later that I ended up getting tattoos as well. But looking at such girls is what motivated me, inspired me to actually be a part of this. And then the next year at Miss Earth, when India won its first ever Miss Earth with Nicole Faria from Bangalore, I, in that moment when the host announced that Miss Earth 2010 is, and he screams his heart out saying India, and the camera goes on Nicole and she bursts out with a laugh on her face and tears down her eyes, and the audience is roaring with pride. I, I knew that if this girl can do this, then I also want somebody to scream India for me. So coming to the parent support for modeling, I mean, obviously, mana traditional families have uh, a modeling and chinna chinna battle ni, fashion TV lo, chinna chinna taro, and you have to be in swimsuits, yes. bikinis. So obviously, Trust me, 99% of the typical Indian I agree. families, they don't I agree. agree with that. I agree. So, how did your family support you? So, even for me, as a young girl, when I used to grow up watching movies or watch fashion TV also, I used to feel a little embarrassed when I used to see, because this is, this is what has been taught to all of us growing up, right? That this is not something that you should be encouraging. But then when I met with this one girl from Mumbai, she was a model and she told me that actually wearing a bikini has made her feel the most empowered she has felt all her life. I thought, okay, there has to be a reason why this girl is saying this in such a way. So I spoke with my mother, I spoke with my father and my father was the most reluctant one because you know how dads are with daughters. But I think when my mother understood that there's actually nothing wrong, people will judge you for wearing a bikini as well as wearing a lehenga, a sari or even a burkha today. So there is nothing with the clothes that has to be, you know, taught to the girls. But it's actually the society that should be taught that irrespective of what a woman is wearing, it's the girl beneath those clothes 
that has to be respected it's not her clothes that have to be given that respect so i feel like for anybody and everybody the girls especially if they have this hesitancy to wear a bikini i would say that start with wearing a one piece because that is most comfortable for you and then you can head to a two piece if you feel comfortable even in pageants today in competitions today it's not a compulsion to wear a two piece bikini in miss universe and miss world last year the girl that came from a muslim country she ended up wearing a veil on her head and a full sleeved swimsuit so pageants also today have evolved so much that understanding of culture is more important than the fact that this is a competition and somebody has to be scored so generally itla beauty pageants lo and modeling uh, career lo unna valaki if you don't mind me asking this meer itla commitment ivvali kontha mandi ki you have to do certain things i'm like everyone feel that uh, all these people have done those things did you ever face such a situation luckily i never had to face anything like this and i think hyderabad as an industry as a city has been so open to the idea that all of that was in the past and today it's only based on your talent that you will actually be taken forward in the industry now i have also not come across anybody from my circle that has had to go through such a situation but if in case anybody has gone through a situation that is very disheartening to know but i'm sure that was not something they were expecting so it's just two sides of the story you need to understand and ab- be able to analyze that who is this person that is approaching you that street smartness has to come in you where you need to understand that if this person is being too kind to you too sweet to you sometimes it can be a negative thing but sometimes maybe that's just how this person is so i feel if anybody has been through such a situation then i'm sorry that it happened to you but the industry is not bad at all it's just about the kind of people you come across generally everyate untaro itla pageants lo participate chese vallu models and miss india they first say the dialogues that uh, i'm going to help the society i'm going to live for the society but they end up in uh, acting in movies and item songs special songs so are you going to do that so if i had to actually become an actress or be a part of the film industry i would have done this long back because in hyderabad our industry is so open to newcomers that i have had offers come down my way but because that is not my field of interest i have refused each and every offer that has come my way so i'm not even saying that i am going to go about you know being mother teresa but i have already been working with government schools in order to bring awareness on type 1 diabetes because this is also something that has been happening a lot to children post covid anybody and everybody who is especially in europe and us there has been research that children who've had covid will sometime in life end up having type 1 diabetes so if this is happening there imagine if in india how many children would have had covid and how many of them could end up with type 1 diabetes so if they are not made aware right now then it's going to be too late so my focus is not to bring world peace or to have adopt a village or something like that but it's just that if a few people i can make them understand with what is type 1 diabetes i think that is my purpose for joining this pageant this industry and acting and item songs i'm very happy doing that at home in front of my mirror <laughs> but not in front of a big screen right now are you a tiktoker not at all i am not at all a tiktoker uh uh-huh. you don't do any reels going with the trends no acting reels no dancing reels and the only dance that i can perfectly do is kathak because i am a trained kathak dancer from the last 15 years okay. so if that is something anybody wants to approach me with then i'm gladly going to do it so what is it the message you want to give to everyone yeah, it's okay. just life advice that my parents have taught me okay. that has gotten me this far is that don't ever give up because it took me 7 years to actually get to here and have this crown on my head but it was the fact that i never gave up i was resilient Of mm-hmm. course there were bad days of course there were times when i thought enough but it was the next day the new hope of a new morning that got me convinced that it's not the end of the road 
So if any time, if any of you has a bad day, remember it's a bad day. It's not a bad life. Things will change. Time will change with what has to do with it. And you have to just trust the process and understand that there's no point in giving up in life. It's a beautiful life. It's one life. So just make the most of it, whether it your, be it your dreams, be it your job, be it anything you have. Just give it one more try because trust me that one step of one more try, that is the most important one. So now let's get back to the Hyderabad. Yes. Show me your Hyderabadi slang. My Hyderabadi slang. So one thing that I'm often heard saying at home or outside is, so if I'm talking to my mom on call and I'll tell her that, Mama, usko bola aisa nako karo. Nahi ono aisa kai ko kara mere saath. Aisa nahi kar sakte tum. This is something that you will find me saying most of the time. So the word kaiku, nako, hao, these are words that I will always be saying. And in my bhabi, because she's from Delhi, so she is not still used to this whole slang. So she's often told me that prachi se nahi, prachi se mat karo. Don't say all these words. I'm like, bhabi, you live here, you will understand, and you will also Aray, start saying these words. Nako Hyderabad ke log hai, ke rak dalte. Yes. <laughs> so it was really nice having you on screen, sharing a screen with you. Thank you for having coffee me. with you. Yes. This is not the coffee with Dash show. <laughs> I can say that definitely. We can say coffee with Surya or yes. live with Surya. Yes. So it was really amazing. Thank it was you. really an amazing experience Thank to meet you. Thank you so much. You're so sweet. And as I already said, you're so beautiful. I really hope I'm and like, I'm, I'm very I wish happy. you all the best Thank you have you. to win. Yes, I'm happy that you made me so comfortable. It was a great chat and I'm glad that I did this. Yep. So guys, Tanu October lo Miss Grand International Pageant Kelpodunan Mata. So akkada tanu vinna valani mana manta mana India tarpuna tanu support jayali. So let's say go India. I hope that everybody who is watching at home from anywhere in the country Please support me. Please support India as we all march towards Miss Grand International 2022, the grand and the gold 10th anniversary on 25th of October, live from Indonesia. And I hope that you keep supporting me. Bye-bye. <laughs>